Hello everyone, this is Ken Paris from your Dearborn City Council. We have another segment today on Council in the Community. I have a special guest with us today that I will introduce here shortly, but I want everybody to think back. How long has Dearborn been a city? We've been a city since 1929, and we've had a lot of historic figures, a lot of history in our, our community. We've had a lot of businesses come and go. What's your first thought about the oldest business in Dearborn? <laughs> I know, like myself, I think about Ford Motor Company as one. You know, businesses that have come and go. But our special guest today knows all about this, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Tim Schramm. Thank you, Tim, for being with us today. Tim Schramm is from the Howell Peterson Funeral Home. I want to ask Tim, 1873, from what I understand, 150 years that Howell Peterson has been in our community. Tell us a little bit about Hal Peterson. Thank you, Ken, appreciate, appreciate the opportunity uh, to share a little bit of Hal Peterson's history. Uh, Elba Howe came to uh, the Dearborn area in 1864 uh, to be the uh, station master at the Michigan Central Railroad. And he started a general store there in which he would stock coffins to assist local farmers in burying their loved ones. His son, Lewis Howe, was born in 1873, and Elba hung a sign that said, Howe and Son Funeral Directors, and that was the formation of Howe Peterson Funeral Home in 1873. Wow, excellent. So how did you become involved with uh, Howe <laughs> Peterson? You know, I know you've been here for a number of years, and you know, you go, go back in time, so you know, how are you where we are at today? Um, so, how I got into funeral service, um, high school senior took a military aptitude test, number one career was Marine Corps officer, which many of my employees today would say that would have been a great choice for you. Um, but second was funeral director, and uh, I got an athletic scholarship to Wayne State University and they have one of two baccalaureate mortuary science programs in the United States. And I uh, went down and met with the program director. He told me to get with uh, five local funeral directors. Four of them told me, don't do it, you'll hate your life. It's 24-7, 365 nights, weekends, holidays. You're gonna miss family functions, family yeah. events. Christmas Day, Thanksgiving, blah, 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 all of those types of things. The fifth person was Joe Peterson here at Howe Peterson Funeral Home. And Joe spent three days with me, showed me every facet of funeral service. And uh, at the conclusion of those three days, he said, when you get in your last year of school, give me a call, I'll give you a job. Wow. And uh, five years later, uh, I was on the extended program. Um, I was in my last year of school. I called Joe. He said, tall guy, football player, pinstripe suit, cowboy boots. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, you know, how's Monday? And uh, uh, that was over 36 years ago. I had the honor and privilege of working with three generations of the Peterson family when I first started. Used to work visitation with Kathleen Peterson, the wife of Edwin Peterson the first Peterson to have his name on the sign. So it's been a while now that we, since we have not had an actual Howe or Peterson that's directly involved, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, the Howe family, two generations, uh, Elba and Louis. Uh, Louis Howe and Edwin Peterson entered into a partnership in 1928. And then Ed and Kathleen's son, Joe, and his wife, Dorothy, continued to operate the funeral home. Uh, after Joe passed away, uh, his wife Dorothy and son Eric, and following his death, uh, their daughter Carrie. Uh, and so having worked for three generations of the family, uh, in 2011, uh, they made me the chief operating officer uh, because they really were not working on a day-to-day -day basis any longer. And in 2015, we began that ownership transition. And, 
2017 became the owner and operator of I'm How Peterson I'm glad that you made Funeral. mention of that because you are the CEO and owner mm -hmm. of How Peterson. Do you have any other uh, facilities elsewhere outside of the city of Dearborn? Yes, our Taylor location's been in Taylor since 1962. Current location moved across the street to where we are now in 1989. And then in December, we acquired the former J.L. Peters Funeral Home in Lincoln Park. You know, just to give a little bit of perspective, here we are in West Dearborn near the original location at Michigan and Howell. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this quite a few years ago too. Well before you though, Tim, I used to deliver papers here when I was a kid. So, <laughs> and then the Muirhead building down the street sure. and so on. So yeah. just giving everybody a perspective. The history of Dearborn. What kind of perspective does that give you or what kind of responsibility is a long time established business in the city of Dearborn? How do you connect with the community? It's an honor and a privilege for us Absolutely. to be in service of the community and how have we lasted 150 years is by taking exceptional care for families. We believe every human being deserves dignity and care and every family who has seen uh, the darkness of death and grief deserves to see a light in us through our professional direction and expert guidance. So that's how I think we stay embedded in the community. Uh, other things that we do, so Liz London is with us today. She's our community relations director. She's out in the community on a daily basis. All of our funeral directors are active members in the community somehow, some way, whether it's the Chamber, the Elks, the Exchange Club, in which right. you and I were members of. Uh, I've been the secretary of the Exchange Club uh, for over 20 years now. I'm a board member for the Dearborn Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm a past president of the Dearborn Area Business Builder, still a member of that association. Um, so just it, like anybody else, right, we care about the community we live in, want to provide assistance in any way we can in supporting local churches, local programs, uh, local service clubs. Um, but we also all enjoy getting out in the community, um, not only serving here at the funeral home, but out in the community somehow, some way. And so as an example, Dearborn Homecoming, stop by the beer tent, I'll pour, you, I'll pour you a cold one if Absolutely. you stop by. Absolutely, you even have uh, some connection to some sports for a number of years too. <laughs> so, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't add that, you know, to your fine resume and so on. And I really appreciate uh, taking the time to be with us today because I want to make mention that the Dearborn City Council uh, did have a citation several months ago commemorating your 150th anniversary, you know, of uh, having the business here in the general area. It's quite an accomplishment and having a business like this firmly embedded within the community and giving to our community, I gotta say thank you. I mean, personally, that's what made me want to come and have a discussion with you today because everything that you personally and your staff here and the business in of itself for so many years. Is there anything else that maybe in closing that you'd like to say or ask? Um, one, uh, again, an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. I, I'm very privileged to be able to call you a friend, uh, but more so thank you for your willingness to be a volunteer leader in this community to make us who we are, the city of Dearborn. It takes exceptional leaders like you who are willing to step forward and lead the way for us. Well, I appreciate that. That's, that's very kind of you. Tim, Thanks, thank Dad. you for this today. This is Ken Paris from your Dearborn City Council. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Take care.